Hey Rush, it's Reckless here, and welcome to another Temple of the Heart video. Reckless, Reckless, you already made so many Temple of the Heart videos. Can you, I'm just so tired of this. Can you just stop? All right, I get it now. I get it. Boys and girls, this card is just so unique. So unique that in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the analysis of it. And then in the first portion, we'll be doing a little bit educational. And then for the rest, we'll be playing out maybe one or two games to showcase what I was talking about previously. So the other day, I was just scrolling through the Stormbound Reddit forum, and I don't typically go on Reddit that often, but two posts actually caught my eye. The first being Reckless Rush Temple of Heart, and the second being Temple of the Heart. I just want to say if your name is Tomato Awkward 1015 or H. Bovine, thank you because you're my main inspiration for making this video. In the first post, I seemingly won a game against Tomato Awkward playing a Temple of Heart deck, which is true because I'm currently running Temple of the Heart in my main deck, as you can see here, for a reason I'll explain later. And in the second post, a player is asking, what is the use of this card? The comments do a good job explaining base health differences and synergies with Restless Goats, Broken Truce, but no one really mentions a deck. And I don't blame the comments, I mean, is there even a good deck for this card? No. No, there is not. Wait, Reckless, don't you like, play that card in your main deck? Yes. Yes, I do. But it's not the deck that makes this card good. Let's head over to the lab, the place where I do all my fun experiments, so I can show you all my research. Wait, sorry, wrong lab. I guess we can start by analyzing what was the initial intention upon the creation of this card. Believe it or not, one of the developers admitted that this card was made to add an extra layer of survivability, or in other words, to make the game stall out longer so you can play your higher mana cards. In other words, this basically just means that it's meant to be a control card, and we already know how much the devs like control. So why is a Rush player using a control card? Unlike other traditional structures, Temple of Heart is the only one that can actually provide negative value in regards to giving your enemy health. Temple of Heart is one of the hardest cards to actually play with, and it's really difficult for the average player to understand the purpose of this card. Aside from just balancing out both base healths, this card must be useful somehow, right? Let me start by introducing you to some new theory I crafted myself. There are two basic stages when Temple of Heart is in play, and on top of that, two additional phases within one stage. The most basic is Equilibrium. This is when both base healths are in balance. There's nothing volatile about the game, and the game typically continues as normal. The next is disequilibrium. This is when they are out of balance. But there are two additional phases in this stage. The first is when the enemy has the higher base health, which I refer to as offbeat, and the second is when the enemy has the lower base health, onbeat. What off and onbeat means is essentially how the tempo of the game is expected to be played. The worst outcome here is when enemies are higher base health, offbeat, and you end up dealing damage to their base, either intentional or unintentional. You should try to avoid damaging the enemy during offbeat at all times because 1. Temple of Heart is now supplying pressure, and 2. If the enemy doesn't deal with it, you will gain that health back next turn. There is a common trap enemies fall into. During the offbeat phase, the enemy tries to dish out extra damage into your base. At this point, the entire game changes and has now become a defend at all costs type game because your temple will boost you back up eventually if you stay alive. As for the on beat phase, since the enemy has a lower of the base health and you know the temple will benefit the enemy next turn, you have three options. One, the most aggressive play here is to dish out a ton of pressure and even slide in some extra damage if possible because this is the best window for applying damage. This option is only to be used when you know you have a way to capitalize on this advantage for at least the next 3 turns. 2. Just wait. If you just wait, in 2 turns this phase should repeat itself assuming the base healths are untouched. Or 3. Force bring your base health down by using cards like Restless Goats or simply letting the enemy underground springs trigger. This option is very limited of course. Now this doesn't really make sense at first. If you were to apply this theory in a real match, you will likely lose. And this is where I start providing the real fun. Going back to offbeat turns, where I only mentioned you should not look to damage enemy base, well, what should you do? In these turns, you can of course be patient and slowly play the long game, or use the best strategy here, which is to pressure the enemy. During offbeat turns, you should look to set down your units on the enemy baseline. Assuming some live, your temple will trigger at the start of your turn, setting the game now into an onbeat phase, and this is where you can really dish out some crazy damage. I mean, just look at this image for example. 
The enemy had 18 base health and instead of defending, took their chances. Well, I did 18 damage in one turn and won that game. Ouch. Now this next game beautifully illustrates the importance of on-beat and off-beat phases. The enemy was only one base health above me, essentially an off-beat turn for me, so I positioned Devastators on their baseline. The enemy had no response, so on my turn the temple triggered which now shifts phases to on-beat and Devastators for disgusting damage in a single turn. Now that was a lot of theory to take in, and hopefully you learned something, but what makes this card good in my deck? As most of you know by now, I have 14 base health and I'm dueling these 20 base health titans and the standard RR deck doesn't quite work well for me. Instead, I am taking a slower approach, taking advantage of my low base health to speed up the pace of the game. Essentially, I try to juggle the base health around 12 or less to finish the enemy off in one solid turn. I don't recommend this deck unless there is at least a 4 base health disparity between you and your opponents and I also advise you not to play this card unless level 4 or 5. Why level 4 or 5? Well, there is one more part of the theory I'd like to introduce. Within Disequilibrium, there are two additional divisions. One is balance. This means that despite being in Disequilibrium, we can expect both base healths to balance out perfectly, setting us back in equilibrium. And number two is juggling. Juggling means that the base healths will never be set in balance and they will infinitely bounce back and forth until something else happens. The beauty of juggling is that you can really mess around with it and start planning out your future on B off B turns accordingly. There is quite a lot of volatility in these cases however, as having a 1-3 to three base health difference will lead to an infinite juggle. Having 4 base health difference will set both bases in equilibrium. And by these numbers, I mean multiples of them of course, so 4, 8, 12, etc. Temple at levels 1-3 to three are a lot more stable and it's harder to achieve juggles, which make games significantly harder to play. Oof, that was a ton of theory. For those that didn't care at all, let's just play out some games now and see how the deck fares against those 20 base health titans. Hello boys and girls and welcome to our first match. So it actually took us a while to find a base health 20, so... I'm kind of exhausted from all the games of playing just other base health like base health 19 and stuff okay so anyways back to the game um devastator cycle is always happening that's a fact and then i mean we don't really have the best hand here unfortunately we can play a little bit aggressively like this it's okay um but that play overall is just really bad and in total this is just you know pretty much four strength because gp doesn't even really count as a unit i guess Interesting. So when the ah, uh, this is gonna suck. If I cycle into, <laughs> if I really cycle into hysteria, I'm gonna have to play it here. Okay, I don't have to. Okay, we, we're gonna have to make use of this temple then. Interesting, interesting. So believe it or not, this they don't. No one understands this yet. So I'm gonna play very, very weird, so that nobody really catches on to what the heck I'm doing. But if I play like this. My assumption is that they should be able to to kill both these units. And with that, I can set down a, a safe temple. Even like you generally you don't want to play your buildings um, you know, center column, but I might have to. Hysteria on that? That's such a waste. That's such a waste. No, <laughs> there's no temple play anymore. I hope it buffs this one. Buff this one, buff this one. I get the most use out of a hysteria if they do. Ah, no hyst And I'm going to draw it right now. Watch. Yeah. Yeah. What do you know? Yep. What do you know? All right. Anyways, back to the game. This is pretty obvious. This kind of sucks because I really wanted a temple game. But as you can see, we might not have to actually play temple. At the same time, we could play temple. It's very... um situational here i guess also for those of you that watched my stream two days ago and i know you probably realized i was i was a uh, <laughs> diamond two at the end of the stream and i'm diamond three unfortunate unfortunate okay there, this is not even a temple game guys i'm sorry but there's not even a temple game which is kind of sad honestly kind of sad this is not a temple game you just hysteria this five pretty good you could even temple here just think of that this is hilarious. If I temple here, I'm going to do it. Let's do it. It's the highest value technically because it's five or four. However, if I doppel, obviously it defends a lot more, I guess. I mean, we're also in lethal range too, by the way. So you could just lose. 
but I really wanted to set down an actual temple. Like I've had crazy, crazy temple games, but this game obviously like it's just kind of like a worse even rock. But there is one thing to note. This is actually a interesting like mental game, I guess. Because right now I'm obviously on beat, right? So if I'm on beat, they, this is bad because they want it to trigger. So they might keep this alive, which I think they will here. They might keep this alive just so that they get the base health. Yeah, they're keeping it alive so that they actually get the base health. That's interesting. So this is what I said you shouldn't do, right? Like on beat into the, the unit going in. However, however, I mean, this is also really good in a sense. <laughs> okay. You could actually do like a you know a really gross potion play here, but I genuinely do not think this is play. Genuinely don't think this is play. Okay, this is at least something better. What I'm looking to do here is just base lock. No, not base lock. Sorry. Um, just defend, I guess. But you want to defend with units that they most likely can't clear. As you can see, they have a few level fours. But I'm gonna play a little greedy, I guess, playing like this. And then I could just play. Okay, I'll have to play like this, I guess. I'm hoping they don't have a four strength to perfect clear into... Like, if they have a four strength, they can perfect clear into, like, a runner. But that's, like, asking for a lot. So, I don't really know. Obviously, a three movement also clears here. So, that's kind of greedy. Yeah, I probably should have played Gifted. But that's what I'm saying. Gifted is, like, a lot easier to get level five. So, they could probably just Gifted and then throw the runner. Oh, well, we'll see. I think a gifted is a lot more common. Gifted with the two movement is more common than a three movement. So maybe this is a temple game, I guess. I, I didn't expect it to be, but it kind of is. Now they have now they're pressured completely on this. Really? Needle blast? Oh, they're gonna end me. Oh, they have a saber lethal. They have to, right? Like that play doesn't do anything. I'm shaking, guys. I'm shaking. What do I do? <laughs> I don't understand. What did they expect that play to do? That play realistically would not do anything for them. Okay, I guess we'll, we'll take it, but it was not really a temple win. So I'll be right back and we're going to actually play a temple win. <gasps> we found another 20 base health. However, I think this is the same person. <laughs> All right. This is actually Jensen, only 95, the same person we just played. However, uh, no problem by me. I mean, it's going to be really fun. This hand's actually amazing. Like, just so good i can't really cycle anything which is kind of bad honestly it's, it's sometimes it's actually better to have at least one bad card in your hand so you can cycle it out because now all my bad cards are going to show up all at the same time anyways um this looks like the play i'm going to head start but i know it's going to be very unlucky if it's okay <sighs> dodge the bullet there if it lands right there it's really bad this, so this is completely fine this is what i mean like my bad cards i need to cycle both of these out now so you, we're obviously already offbeat and, you know, our goal is to set down temple. That's what I really want to do. Wow, that's actually so good because that clears that. And that means when that clears, what, Jensen, only, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? If I set down like TOH here, I'm already winning. Oh, I didn't set down TOH. I could set down Devastators. That's a hard decision, isn't it? Jensen, why do you do that? Why do you do that? I'm pretty sure Jensen would just clear though. I don't remember their deck too well, but I know they run GP. I think scrapped. I don't even want to like attack though. Like it's just so bad. I'll just play for most value. This is technically most value. So I'll play like this. It looks ugly, looks dumb. That's the whole point. Just make it look ugly. I'm trying to really get TOH value. That's all I really want. I want a TOH game. And it's very hard to find. Oh, Jensen. Jensen only. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. Or, yeah, sorry, Jensen. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't really know what this is. Oh, Jensen sneaky. Okay, okay. So we're going to have a really very, very interesting game here. But then we have a stereo value. So it's like, do you want a hysteria? And the answer is yes. So now we don't have temple again. Oh my goodness. So now we don't have temple value once again. But I guess at least one thing that is worth noting is that, do you see how I'm running temple of heart, but I don't even need to play it? Like this is a hybrid. Like you can 
choose to play super temple of heart focused or you can choose to play um like aggressive like this and then either way it's gonna work out really nicely what is this jensen what are you doing what are you doing if i had like level five for guns i though <laughs> just saying um but what do i do here i kind of it's so hard to say because Lethal is so close. It's literally around the corner. You can also cycle into Lethal with Saber. Okay, I'll cycle this then. No Lethal. It's okay. Play like that. I don't even know what this. I don't. I don't know, guys. I'm sorry. I. I just don't. I think they run Hysteria. They run like a lot of push units. So just put like that. Hysteria. This is a Hysteria counter also good against like. I don't know if like if they could target this. Then it also counters two movements. Sorry, not two movements. What am I saying? If they can like counter this, then they can also. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. But you get the idea. This is the best positioning. This is bad against Void Searchers, though. Oh, they're going to have Toxic Sacrifice, actually. Yeah, in that case, yeah, it's really bad. I'm just kidding, by the way. <laughs> just kidding. So we don't even get a. Look, Hysteria. See? This is what I said. Hysteria. How, how do I call this? Like, so obvious. Okay, hit this. <gasps> wow. They actually live because their destructive is not level one higher. If it was one level higher, I could just easy finish there. I don't know what to tell you. Like, I'm just going to base lock you again. <laughs> I don't understand. Okay, I can't even base lock because level one. <laughs> if it was level three, I could base lock you. Oh my goodness. Um, Let's see. Well, I guess the best play in that case would be something like this. I don't understand. I honestly don't understand. Sorry, you guys. I just I don't get it. I don't get it. We have lethal with this, lethal with this. I mean, they can still win. They can still win. I mean, they just beat Hysteria, but imagine if they did... Um, How do I know? I never remember the name. Wow, I always forget the name. Oh, wait, do we lose? Oh! <gasps> No, we can't lose, right? Yeah, there we go. Okay, we won. Jensen, you put up a good fight, but I'm kind of sad I'm not using my temple here. Kind of sad we're not using our temple here. In that case, we have to go for round three. We're going to have to play another match just to show actual temple. So I'll be right back. <gasps> Boys and girls, we finally get a match. So it gets a diamond one though, and I'm pretty sure I've matched against this player before. I, it didn't end well. <laughs> okay, um, if we can get a temple turn one, it's really good. So I'm worth sword cycling first. Don't get temple turn one. We can also restless, but since this is against base L20 and they obviously have max cards, I need a lot of value. So I'll settle for something like this. It's fine. Man, I never draw my temples early though, which is really lame. And now drawing temple doesn't even do anything because mana four, you don't want to be playing temple. Okay, interesting. Play their own GP and they played this. This is actually a little annoying. I think I have to let the GP go just to deal with this. This is, oh, uh, ah, that, that sucks. That sucks. That sucks a lot. But I'm going to have to let the GP slide, at least for now. I'll hold my gifted, I think, to deal with that for later. Because like I can clear it obviously, but it, it won't get the value and that's, that's just bad. So I won't do that. I want to play like this. I want to see, I kind of want to use, okay, I, I want to, but I don't want to. Let's see what they do with this. Most value play. We can also temple here, but I think that's a little greedy because it's obviously, they're obviously going to counter it and then it's pretty bad. So we'll see what we can do with that. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Very interesting play. And actually, I'm completely happy with this play. Completely happy. So this looks completely bad, right? Like, oh my gosh, now it's eight base health difference instead of like what you typically need. And you're playing Rush. How the heck? This is so bad. But not necessarily. So I can con um choose to position my Saber Fuzz here or here. Since I, they like almost definitely play witches i will play like this instead and temple's always better on the, in the corners so this is fine 
So you could play Saber here, reset front line, but they obviously will have like a two movement witches, and then like that sucks. But in here, they, this is completely defended. They need execution to actually deal with it. And this is a huge threat to eight base health difference. If you guys watch the video, it's a it's a multiple of four. So it's gonna be pretty fun. It's going to be pretty fun. I'm glad this isn't level five at least. Level four is just store doable. <laughs> kind of. Not necessarily not really, but you get what I mean. Just kind of. Um I don't think like these cards just don't see play honestly, but Devastator doesn't see play the most. Like sees play the least here, I'd say. Yeah, okay, this is kind of what I wanted. This is this is actually really good. So you can GP. Okay, this is actually pretty smart. I'm gonna put my GP here because I want the bounce to hit the three strength here. If it does hit the three strength, then we're pretty set. And then obviously you don't want to play too many units on the board, especially since you're playing um, HV. So I can just play for a big body like that. It's fine. This is also good against like it's at least trying to attempt to counter witches. Again, if this hits on this, we have a hysteria play. So looking good so far. Looking good so far. You. Generally, if you think about Hysteria in terms of value, since you can get two mana for like a Gifted, which is five, so two mana for five strength, for three mana, how much are you willing to pay, right? Well, for four mana, like two Gifted, that's 10. So for three mana, you should ideally be hitting at least a four strength, four strength on a four strength, like at least eight damage total. Okay, there's the Witches, exactly as predicted. Glad we did denied them the witch's drain there. And like you can see how they're taking a while to under, understand what play should I be making. Oh man, oh man, this is gonna be fun. Okay, the temple is hitting at least two more times here. Well, sorry, not two more times. It's gonna balance here, but I could play restless. And realistically, that's 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 that would have been so cool. Uh, I don't know if you could like you could throw restless and then put yourself at two less, but doesn't really make sense, does it? You also don't have Hysteria of Play here anymore. Actually, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this. I think this is okay. I'm, I'm actually putting even more pressure by doing this. And then in terms of this, you always want to position your units in such a way that the low strength units... Uh, if this bounces here, it's bad. Okay, if it bounces there, it's actually better. Because now if we do this, the low strength units are in between. The high strength units are like alternating. So high strength, low strength... I, they're not even that high, but you get what I mean. It's a counter hysteria, of course. So now the like, the highest value they could get is three, three on three. Which, like I just said, you want to be hitting a four strength at the bare minimum, four strength on four strength minimum. HV comes out. Oh no, I should not play gifted actually. Oh, and of course I'm unlucky. It's okay. We have a um, potential hysteria play here. Mm, that hits for two, that's at eight. I don't even have Hysteria here. Oh man, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Okay, at least we're actually ahead and they're going to clear our temple here. So we're actually ahead slightly. Kind of sucks if we had this level five that is actually Hysteria. And if we do Hysteria there, they destroy our temple. So we have complete priority. But it doesn't look like we have much to do here. We're just going to have to reapply pressure in that case. And you just want to, yeah, just reapply pressure is fine. I want to avoid the toxic sacrifice in case that card exists. This should be okay. Not like the best thing, but not much I have. This thing grew way too strong. It kind of sucks. But there's another trick I can do here. I can take six, six damage and then I can like play temple and then defend pretty much to, to drain even more. Not sure if that's the play, but... We'll see. So far, this has been a pretty good game. Cordia, really? Interesting. I mean, this is open. These two are actually both open in most cases. Kind of, not really. It's close. I need to cycle this. We get another movement then. Oh, that's actually dangerous. Okay, in that case, it's not. You could Hysteria it to stop the dragon, but that doesn't make sense. It, it makes actually sense to let it hatch and then Hysteria after, so... Uh, in that case, we can actually Hysteria now, because we will draw it back before this happens. And we do need to get rid of this, so how do we do it? How do we do it? So we have enough for these three, and I, honestly, I kind of want to play these. 
just because I want to cycle my Devastators out. It looks like this will be the play. Keep prototypes for now. Need a, we're going to have to play Hysteria on that. And then we could like position here. Uh, there's no good position for this anymore, which is kind of sad. There, no matter what, they have a chance to hit it. I position here, I end up blocking myself. I think positioning here would probably have to be the best play. I position here, these two are moving up. And then realistically, like this is... Yeah, this is fine. This will most likely survive and then I can hopefully do something there. <laughs> it kind of sucks my temple had nowhere to go. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Forgotten Souls also doesn't even see play here because I'm so set back. Potion on that. Okay, that's fine. I wonder if they actually hit this or hit this now. They have seven mana. I don't think they can do both, but it's possible. Witches exist. Witches here. Westwind. Sunbeam. Sunbeam. Okay. Sunbeam hitting that. We're still alive. We're going to get one temple trigger. It's not looking good though, guys. Not looking good. Four damage on this is at that at nine. Ooh, he plays aggressive. I think that might even be misplay. Because I guarantee it will get two triggers now. <laughs> Won't I? I'm getting two triggers now and setting us both at 10. Hmm. Interesting. This is a problem though. I really don't like how this is um, so congested. There's nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. I mean, actually, ah, uh, it's just one strength too high. Can you cycle this then? I could also have cycled head start. Uh, maybe I should have cycled head start now. Yeah, probably would have been the better play. That's all right though. That's all right. Okay, wait, wait. I'm kind of wasting a lot of time here. I want to play head start first, and I it would ideally land here. Okay, sick. And then we can just play here. Yeah, this this is probably the best play we have. Oof, oof. Hard to hard to find though. Hard to find, but that is definitely the best play we have. I have no idea if they have any other runners other than saber paws, but I doubt it. I actually doubt it. I'm surprised they also played Sunbeam so defensively because there, there's actually no way I could have lethaled them. Aggressive um, Sunbeam wins the game there. Right, they played this card. No, and they also took out my Hysteria potential. And they probably have this open now. I think we lose here. I think we lose here. Cordia? Yeah, I need a two mana. Yeah, we lost. Unfortunate unfortunate that's a good game it's a good game and that brings us to the end of this video you seen me win you seen me lose the deck is not the most op thing but it is sure a lot of fun to play with and it's kind of sad that i didn't get to have the most brilliant games in terms of the toh usage however at least these games go to show that you don't have to be so reliant on the toh there's just some cases specifically like swarm rush would have been a really fun uh, find and anyways it's been a while um i guess quick update i really wanted to make a video like i've been thinking of making videos and like which videos to make and how to make them for so long and i've started on multiple projects it's just that i never really sat down to do one and i just spent the last like seven hours on this one i really hope you guys enjoyed and yeah that's pretty much it um if you're new to the channel subscribe and if not I mean, if you don't want to subscribe, it's okay. I, I don't mind. Okay, bye-bye. See ya.